this movie, and I wouldn't think it would have been possible, it, it expands the Spider-Verse even more than the first one. Mm. And I, I want to know which was the secret to do that, using at the same time all these kind of different crazy uh, animation styles. Uh, you know, I think we've all, you know, maybe sort of discussed this amongst ourselves, you know, while the first film broke so much new ground um, and when it started being recognized for all the, you know, all, uh, given all its accomplishments and started being recognized, you know, the shoes that we had to fill for the sequel got a little bigger, but at the same time, as artists, it also just gave us permission to try more things. Um, so incredibly challenging to try to develop these techniques, but as an artist, as a fan, uh, you know, we basically got to play in a playground um, and play with really awesome tools and really amazing artists and awesome people uh, who were all equally dedicated to, you know, making sure that we weren't just resting on our laurels and, uh, and getting comfortable and trying to repeat the success of the first film, but try to break new ground and do new things. Uh, you absolutely did. Uh, uh, Justin, um, what I actually loved the most about these, these new movies is that it has a very specific rhythm and a balance. It really accelerates when it's the mainstream, the multiverse and the action, but then it slows down in order to address family issues going deeper in, uh, in Gwen and Miles' characters. How did you work also with the screenplay in order to find this very specific balance, I'd say? I think from the very beginning, all three of us knew that if we were going to make a big spectacle driven movie about all these different dimensions, the only thing that would make it matter is if there was something strong, a very strong emotional sense of stakes to the whole film that uh, with these characters and, and their families and, and their personal lives and that we could see ourselves in and our own conflicts with our own families that we could relate to. If we didn't make that matter, if we didn't make that matter, none of the spectacle was going to mean anything. It would have just been a bunch of loud noises and fast moving <laughs> visuals. And so what we tried to do was purposely pick moments in the film where it would slow down and you would be with these characters. Yeah. And I think those are the ones we worked the longest yeah. on. Yes. Actually, the, the, the action, and the, the big stuff was probably the stuff that went the fastest because, but the thing that took years, yes. years was actually developing yeah. those scenes where people were just talking to each other. Yes. You previously co-directed Soul, which is a completely different animation movie in the tone, in the aesthetic. Uh, did you change your approach to animation, switching from Soul to Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse? No, not at all. It, this is storytelling. Uh, it's just, and and it, it's it's the opposite of changing your approach. You we we bring our unique approaches to everything we do. I think that's part of why we're asked to do these projects and, and work on these projects. Like Justin was mentioning, you know, there's a, one, there's, you can't, you, you won't have a good film if you, if you lose sight of the emotion and the character and the emotional stakes as much as the world challenging stakes. Second, good storytelling has to go over into things like action. Action can just turn into mindless crashing and bashing and bore you. But there's actually a lot of story that is told in action. And, and I think people sometimes might not appreciate that quite as, as much. So that, you know, there's even the action scenes, if it, if it doesn't, if it's not speaking to the story, to the central plot and moving the characters along, we don't have it in the film. So, so if anything, I think that working on um, the emotional elements, the beats of a film like Soul, actually prepared me to, to, to do a film like this. I found that while the first movie deals with what it means in some way to be Spider-Man, the second one deals a little bit more about what it means to be Miles Morales. Uh, can, you, can you talk about this subtle, but I think very important switch in some way? I think that, um... Uh, 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 Chris and I and Dave Callahan, when we were um, writing the movie, 
we we felt like it was an opportunity to get to know every character more deeply, and you know a sequel um, can be uh, a, a difficult challenge unless you use it as an opportunity to go deeper, right? Now that we've gotten to know Miles, like where does he go from here? And so we wanted to explore, you know, what it is like to leave the nest and, and, and leave home and how do you carry with you the, the, the values and strengths of your family out into the world when the world may challenge those values, right? And you may want so desperately to be included by people who maybe don't share the same values as you. That was the, the essential idea that we started with, you know? And, and uh, how can, the, what Miles' essential strength is, is his family. That's his superpower. And how could we challenge that and test it uh, throughout the movie? One of the best part of this second movie is actually uh, Gwen's story. Can you talk about how you developed uh, this character compared to the first one? Yeah, we, we, early on, we thought it would be interesting to start the movie with Gwen in her world and get to know her more deeply um, and see how, you know, how she ha came to be and, and how she sees the world. And it would be an opportunity to show the audience, you know, a wholly different style of, of how a, a world can look, but also, more importantly, it gets you to understand like what her issues going on in her world are with her her dad, uh, and how that it relates to the stories going on with Miles and um, and so it was it was unconventional because obviously Miles is the is the you know is the protagonist of the movie, but Gwen is such an important part of of that story. We wanted her uh, her to be uh, important as well, and her arc that she has with her dad that, that sort of the movie begins and ends with uh, is a really important thematic uh, and emblematic of, of the story we're trying to tell from uh, about parents and children and, and parents needing to grow up just as much as, as the kids are and, and how relationships evolve uh, and how everyone needs to grow and evolve with them.